all so you know how to reach us, how to get more information about the Clean Tech Open as a program. Our national team will be hosting an inf informational webinar on April 15th. Um, these slides will all be circulated to everybody who registered for the webinar so they're able to um, access these hyperlinks as well as to reference the information that we covered uh, over the course of the webinar. Um, by following us on our social media, particularly um, on our Twitter handles listed here, that's a way to stay up to date with the um, most relevant news updates to any of our events and of course as we're all handling all of the um, uncertainty around um, the mitigation of COVID-19. Um, there are a lot of updates that we will share and resources that we'll continue to share through our social media platforms. The Clean Tech Open is, um, as I stated, a national accelerator program. We have been in operation for 15 years. This marks our 15th year as an accelerator program, uh, making us the world's largest and oldest clean technology accelerator. Um, as a result, over those 15 years, we've gathered over a thousand volunteers in the forms of mentors, judges, um, and various supporting event volunteers who are able to support our program, but also expand our network. Uh, the six regional U.S. organizations, uh, like I mentioned, we do represent the Northeast. Um, all six regions do come together at the very end of the entire program um, for a national competition which we'll get into in a little bit later when we discuss the events. So for the Northeast region, to give you all a sense of how we define the Northeast, the Northeast consists of the New England states. Um, so Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Vermont, um, as well as the tri-state area. So New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And then as of 2019, so last year, our partnership with the Canadian consulate in New York, um, we've expanded and opened up our borders to welcoming in Canadian startups. So the Northeast region, we primarily work with Canadian startups on the Eastern side of, of Canada. Um, however, all Canadian startups are welcome to participate in the Clean Tech Open through the region that makes the most sense for them uh, location wise. So what is clean tech? Um, we recognize clean technology as a, a process or a product service that reduces the negative environmental impacts um, through significant energy efficiency improvements, sustainable resource use or environmental protection. Um, so when clean tech, because clean tech covers many sectors, we understand that your technology or your service um, may overlap in various sectors. In fact, most do. So this is a way to understand what niche, clean tech niche your company falls into, as well as um, what we recognize as clean technology and how your company is applicable in that vein. The Startup Accelerator program is structured over a five month period and it aims to offer the resources and the training, the mentoring, showcasing, promotion, um, and access to capital for emerging clean tech startups. We do work with um, early stage startups, typically pre-seed funding. So all of the resources, all of the training, and all of the development work aims to really accelerate uh, the work that you're doing on your company and put you in a position as fast as possible so you can continue to to um, make it, uh, the most of the resources that you have throughout the program, as well as to continue to use and apply those resources long after the conclusion of the program. The, um, each participating startup is matched with four mentors throughout the duration of the program. So those mentors will offer guidance, they'll offer feedback, supporting resources, uh, both on the, the online curriculum um, that each startup uh, participates in through the program, but also they'll offer that guidance, the feedback, a second ear and expertise that they have, whether it's because they are, themselves are involved or knowledgeable about your technology or your industry, or just in general business development. By having four mentors on your team, you're able to achieve that balance of having specialists who are able to speak um, specifically to your technology or to the development of your service, as well as general business guidance. So the ClinTech Open has an online curriculum to guide the training through the program. So each startup um, is able to participate not only um, with their mentors and through the training and events, but also through that online curriculum as a way of guiding that development, keeping them organized, and ultimately producing eight essential business deliverables by the completion of the program. Those eight essential business deliverables um, are meant uh, to be developed and refined through the program, but they serve as those resources that each company can continue to, to use to guide the development of their business and grow their venture. 
So each one of these um, we identify as being uh, an extremely important resource that each company will need not only to grow their venture, but to seek additional funding or capital um, in order to, to meet those funding requirements or those funding targets. The Clean Tech Open, in addition to the online resources and the mentoring, um, also has the value of its network. Over 15 years, we've been able to collect um, the people, the organizations and the contacts, the experts and the industry professionals that all come together to create this wide expansive network nationally um, and internationally now expanding through Canada in order to offer um, more exposure, uh, better and wider, more niche platform. Um, for the startups in order to, to make those connections, to build those relationships, and to continue to gain access for the development of their business. Looking at the 2020 Northeast schedule, so for the Clean Tech Open Northeast program, uh, we wanted to highlight some key dates for those startups um, or mentors or people who are interested in being involved with a program so they can understand um, what key dates they should hold on their calendars or that they should note, as well as the general format of our program. So as um, many of you know, and uh, all of you will know at the uh, conclusion of this webinar, that April 19th is our final application deadline. So if you're considering applying for the Clean Tech Open this year, um, perhaps you even have an application that's uh, pending as we speak, um, I, it's really important to be aware of that application deadline. Um, as we all know, the, the days and the times are, are um, starting to blend a little bit together. So keeping, keeping in mind that that um, deadline is only 10 days away. So please uh, make sure to submit your application prior to that deadline if you want to be considered to participate for the 2020 Clean Tech Open Accelerator program. On May 6th, following um, the acceptance uh, of the teams, all the teams that will be notified of their acceptance status, um, so if you are applying for the Clean Tech Open, please take note that you will receive word by May 6th. Um, on May 8th, please hold the date if you are an applying startup because that's when we're going to have a brief intro via Zoom where all of the startups are going to introduce themselves to the mentor community as well as to each other and some key stakeholders uh, to help guide the mentor matching process. As we said, that's based off of many factors, including the expertise, the industry, as well as the regional location of each of the startups and the mentors. So that information um, that is provided on that meet and greet, um, while virtual, it will be very helpful for both the mentors the startups, um, and then also for our team in guiding the, the matching pro process so we can make sure that each startup has the best mentors possible um, to guide their development through the program. On May 12th and May 14th, um, all accepted startups and mentors will have the option to participate in one of those um, mentor welcome sessions to learn about the mentoring program to um, meet the mentor community or their fellow mentors, um, as well as to, again, help guide the mentor matching process. This is a way so both startups and mentors understand the expectations of their mentor team, the roles that mentors play throughout the program, um, as well as who um, on our team, whether it's through the Northeast staff or our mentor committee, um, and mentor co-chairs, who the resources are that they can tap into should they have questions or run into um, any challenges with their mentoring or, or startup development. On June 2nd and 3rd, our program kicks off with our um, Acad National Academy East. It's a two-day intensive online virtual event um, with workshops, uh, interactive trainings, as well as presentations and keynote speakers that uh, meant to um, serve as a, a bit of a mini MBA and, and jumpstart your participation in the program. That will be held online this year. Um, and we are excited to, to roll out this new format. While it is different and, and there's no replacing the in-person uh, part of the events, we certainly are excited for the ability to really engage people from all across the country, including our speakers, our presenters, and our training guides. The program itself will run from June to September. Um, that will have business clinics and it will also include the weekly curriculum that all startups will be participating in. Those business clinics um, might be in person. They also could be online. That information, we will continue to, to keep an eye on the developments with COVID-19 and, and the in-person events. The um, culminating of the program is a regional pitch competition that we will be holding on October 1st and 2nd in Boston, Massachusetts. 
Um, this is for all participating startups. They are going to take what they learned throughout the program and they're going to compete against one another in a pitch competition where the top teams will be selected and awarded a cash prize. And then they'll also have the opportunity to move on to the national pitch competition where one startup will be awarded uh, the National Clean Tech Open winner of the year. Uh, we are very, very proud to say that 2018 and 2019, the two national winners from those respective years, both hailed from the Northeast cohort. So uh, it's safe to say we're looking for a hat trick this year and, and we're really excited so far at the impressive group of applicants we've gained so far. So that national competition, it's part of the Global Forum and that will convene on October 27th through October 29th in San Jose, California. When you apply for the Clean Tech Open, there's three main areas that we look at at your application. Um, it's how you're defining your market, how you're expressing your solution and tying it back to the market need that you've identified, as well as your team. Um, the team is a very crucial part of the application. We don't want it to, to disappear underneath the other two, which certainly are, are important, but what we really look at with your team is in addition to the credentials and the related expertise to your company, we're also looking to see that your team is coachable. Our program um, between the trainings, the mentors, um, and the overall resources really depends on the, the, the teams to be as sponge-like and susceptible to feedback and to training and as coachable as possible in order to get the maximum value out of the program um, and to prove successful well beyond the completion of the program. So to speak to the program, um, well, while Beth and I can share our insights, we also want to make sure that you all are able to hear from those who have actually gone through the program themselves. So now I'd like to introduce Colin with Optimist Technologies to speak about his experience um, in going through the Clean Tech Open. So Colin, if you could unmute yourself and turn on your video, we'd love to hear from you. Awesome, yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, yeah, we, uh, we have, participated in uh, the Clean Tech Open program in, in 2017. And we were um, early, uh, maybe a quick background on Optimus and then, and then walking through. So we, we build a technology that allows uh, large, medium, and uh, heavy duty diesel engines to operate on 100% renewable fuels. Um, so we've got a complex um, hardware product. We've got manufacturing. We have a uh, wide, wide variety of a uh, wide variety of inputs as, as I think a lot of clean tech companies end up having not uh, doesn't end up generally being just software based or just just a widget you've got a, a complex kind of commingling of manufacturing and software development and, and otherwise so um, so for us um, participating in the, the clean tech open um, one of the I think the biggest takeaways and, and the most beneficial uh, aspects is the access to the network and the resources that the team has built over um, over the you know decade and a half or, or whatnot that the CTO has been operational um, the you know the skill sets um, from the mentors and otherwise that um, you know I think you know one of the things that, that I found with a lot of programs like this and otherwise is you get out of it what you're putting into it and so um, you know, my recommendation to, to, the, to the cohorts and, and to the company selected are definitely to extract the value that, that you can from the mentors and um, the resources that are available, recognizing that, you know, for the most part, all, all these individuals are, are volunteering their time and their effort to, to help you as a, as a company to kind of hit that, that next level. And, you know, I think it's, it's really valuable to have, um, to have some outside perspective um, you know, we're in the trenches day in, day out. We're looking at things that, um, you know, maybe we've spent hundreds or thousands of hours uh, thinking about and, and coming up to solutions on, but, um, but really having, um, you know, having a diverse pool of uh, mentors and, and resources to be able to help you walk through problems, maybe frame it in a different way, and, um, and also identify what those critical milestones are for you to be able to to take the next step, um, whether it's in fundraising or product development or otherwise, um, you know, I think it, it's uh, it's really hard as a small team to be able to, um, you know, sometimes take uh, take a step back and, and take that take that perspective. So 
um, being able to leverage like the, the programming, um, helping to work through the process in, in a coordinated way, and then um, being able to also just, just really use and access the, the network and the mentors in a way that, um, that helps you to, to, to leverage your, your business. Great. Thank you so much, Colin, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Also online to provide their insights is our 2018 national winner, Kristen Taylor, who's representing Radical Plastics, um, to speak about their experience going through the CleanTech Open. So Kristen, Great. if you're able to unmute yourself and show your video. I did, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, and thanks for the opportunity to speak to potential applicants to the uh, CleanTech Open. Um, my co-founder and I um, both spent 25 years in the plastics industry, but this was our first startup. Um, basically, Radical Plastics has invented a proprietary catalyst that renders conventional plastics biodegradable in the environment. Uh, and CleanTech Open was really fantastic at helping us frame our business, uh, as Colin said, set our milestones and really take a big picture view of where we were, where we needed to go. Um, it was essentially a boot camp for starting a company. Um, because we had a lot of industry experience, mostly with big companies, uh, but the mentors that were provided to us were absolutely instrumental in helping us gain that kind of step-by-step -step perspective on how to get you know, from a lab experiment to commercialization. Um, so since CleanTech Open, you know, we had the opportunity to raise a seed round um, and they were really helpful in helping us with our pitch deck uh, in how to speak with investors about how to set up a team. Um, and as Colin said also, you know, really take advantage of all the mentors and the opportunities that are provided through CleanTech Open because we've really found that it just was a springboard for our company to go to that next level. So I, I really can't say enough great things about the program. It, it provides you the, the framework and the discipline that you need to go through the, to answer those questions that you'll need to know to get to that next level in your business. So um, just huge praise, especially for the Clean Tech Open Northeast team. Um, they were really fantastic and I uh, wish you all the best of luck. Thank you so much, Kristen. Um, and thank you both again for, for offering your insights here uh, today for, for not only the uh, prospective applicants, but for all who are just interested in hearing from those who have completed the program um, and where they're at today, some of the companies that we actually work with throughout the accelerator. So in keeping with the, the spirit of hearing from startups, there's nothing that screams optimism or, or rejuvenates. I know I could speak for myself, but um, I'm sure many of you on the line, it's, it's really an encouraging and inspiring thing to, to hear from the entrepreneurs themselves on what they're developing um, and how their solutions are addressing our environmental issues that, that our world is facing. So I'd like to introduce uh, back Beth Zonis, who will guide us through our uh, fun pitch competition today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Patricia. And thank you very much to Colin and Kristen for telling your stories. And congratulations to both, congratulations to both of you. And I want to point out that not only were Colin and Kristen winners in Clean Tech Open, but they were both the 2019 winner and runner-up in the 76 West Prize last year. So um, Optimus Technologies won the grand prize and Radical Plastics won the $500,000 prize, which is also a pretty grand prize. So congratulations to both of you for that. So, and thank you for, for everything that, um, that you said, um, and I believe it's all true. So now I'm going to also just mention um, one other thing. I just wanted to reemphasize something that Jonathan said, and also to let you know that several states uh, across the Northeast are offering, uh, are offering special deals for companies from their states and countries to participate. So I wanted to make sure you know that there is now an offer from New Jersey for teams to participate and get, um, get funding toward their applications. Um, I just got word that the same is true in Maine. We also have um, a benefactor in Rhode Island helping with startups for startups and in Canada. If you are also participating in the Canadian CTA program, you can get your, um, your funding covered for that. So 
Um, so just wanted to make sure that you know that what we are doing is heavily supported by the states and obviously our, our neighbors to the north. Okay, so without further ado, I wanted to make sure that I have the correct list here and we will give you exactly one minute. So please put your timer on as well. I will set a timer. I will not tell you when the, your time is almost up because I don't wanna interrupt you. But if you ha also have a timer, you will know when one minute is up, we have a lot of people to get through. And I will read to you the list that I have and make sure that we have it correct. So I have Atravita Science, Sensible House, Coffee, Coffee Cup Collective, Dana's Resolution, Donna Resolution, Ithaca Clean Energy, Milkman, Optimus Technologies, Orange Charger, Renew CO2, Sidhu Labs, Transit X. I just got one from the Kawa Project, and I also had gotten one from Green Power Labs. So I will, we will take them in alphabetical order. So we're going to start with Atravita Science. So uh, would Atravita Science please turn on your mic and your, um, and your video, and I will turn off mine so we can see you um, as you speak. We'd like to have just that one person on the screen at the time. So um, let's turn off videos unless um, whoever is on from, uh, from Atravita will be speaking only. So um, go ahead, um, Atravita, whenever you are ready. Thanks. Hi, my name is Claudia Maldonado with Atrevita Science, and my company is developing an active morphing blade with, for wind turbines, uh, wind turbines that target the offshore wind market, which is a huge and growing market. From our extensive customer discovery, we know that efficiency and failure are our um, industry's largest pain points. And so our design is an active morphing blade that changes its shape to optimal geometry through various wind conditions. Um, our design gives our customers increased efficiency and sheds loads that are detrimental to the system. So we have a non-provisional patent and we also have exclusive licensing rights to our technology. And our goal in licensing this design to our customers is to give them the active control that they are looking for. So our customers have told us that bigger blades and static designs that are environmentally unfriendly and a continued insistence on onshore installations are the old paradigm. And we believe that our approach and our new design with an active morphing blade gives our customers the active control, increased efficiency, and the um, improved stability that they're looking for. Thank you. Well, very good. Thank you very much for, for that. I think it's super interesting to hear about how people are, uh, are modifying the, uh, the wind industry. And uh, so thank you for what you're doing. We look forward to seeing the, uh, the application from Atrevita Science. So next up we have Sensible House and that I believe is Julie. So Julie, when you're ready, I will turn off my video and you can turn on yours. There she is. Okay, so when you're ready, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Sensible House is an on-site power, clean heating and cooling service company for moderate and middle-income middle homeowners and small businesses in downstate New York. We transformed their expectation for sustainability, resiliency, and energy affordability into their human right. Sensible House is a different kind of energy efficiency company. We apply exclusive technology and design that is only sold by us. These designs are co-developed with world-class partners and local utilities in several New York State's REV demonstration program. We're also different because we don't shy away from tackling complex issues facing retrofit of older homes in urban settings and buildings. We thrive when we can overcome significant regulatory barriers previously posed by local government and utilities. We had built that reputation. When we finish a retrofit, we bring our buildings to exceed building code and help the owner monetize buildings green and societal value. Sensible House has- That's time's up. So finish your sentence, go ahead. We have demonstrated that we can attract over 1.5 million in grant and another million in private investments to adopt our system. Thank you for your time. And we hope to de our deployment impact will help small buildings achieve their total carbon reduction. 
Thank you very much, Julie. Great to see you again. And uh, thanks for your pitch. It's getting better. Each time you say it, it gets better. Really good. Not as funny as last time, but I didn't have a, I didn't have a wine yet. That's okay. Opportunity. Um, stay well. Thank you. You too. All right. Next up, we have Coffee Cup Collective. Um, can you turn on your video? There we go. Allison, you're on whenever you're ready. Okay, great. Hi everyone, my name is Allison Rogers and I'm founder and CEO of Coffee Cup Collective. We're based here in Boston and we're a circular solution for reusable coffee cups. So we partner with cafes and corporates and colleges um, to provide clean and sanitary cups for our customers to check out and use. Um, we're tech enabled, so we have an app. Um, feel free to download it and take a look at it. Um, we just started our beta a few months ago and started rolling out in Boston. So a few high level um, places we're in, we're in Three Buck Headquarters, um, City Hall, Flower Bakery for those Bostonians. Um, we're on pause right now, but what we're realizing is that our service and our key value proposition is becoming more valuable in light of COVID-19. Um, as you know, many cafes are banning to bring your own reusables and are um, looking to just do single use. And so for those cafes that want to still have a reusable option, we are that clean and sanitary option um, for, for our customers and our cafes. So it's a very interesting time for us. I'm gonna cut you off, finish your sentence. Yeah. And then no, no, that's okay. Move on. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, so that is really cool, Allison. I really appreciate your story and glad to know that that some of the local places are using your, your coffee cups. It's awesome. So thanks. Um, look forward to seeing your application as well. And now we have Dana Resolution. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So I believe that that is Udi. All yes. right, Udi, whenever you're ready, I'll start my timer for you. Go ahead. Good morning. We are done are developing bi-directional multi-device wireless power transfer system on a chip. Our system allows new parallel architecture for solar cells and panels, which nearly uh, double the harvest at less than half the cost. That's it. Wow. All right. Then, okay. You you have really uh, boiled it down to a couple of moments of uh, very very clear words. So, and I noticed that you were located in Vancouver, so that's wonderful, and that's yes, why you said good morning, because <laughs> here it's uh, it's good afternoon. But um, great to know that you're doing that work. And uh, as you can all see, there is a huge variety from uh, from coffee cups to um, to powers to um, to wind, uh, wind blades here in our, um, in our, um, in our clean tech open world. So looking forward to seeing your application as well. And, uh, you might want to consider applying also to the, uh, CTA, the Canada CTA, because they, they go together. Yes. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Udi. And, um, next up we have, um, I believe, Green Power Labs, or is there an, um, who's, who's next in the alphabet, um, Dom? Is it green mm -hmm. or is there one that began with F? I can't remember. <laughs> okay, we'll go to Green Power Labs next. I guess that's fine. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much, Beth. Uh, green, uh, well, my name is Alex Pavlovsky. I'm CEO of Green Power Labs, and the company is a clean technology developer um, specializing in predictive energy management. The headquarters are in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Our competencies, skills, and patents in North America are in predictive analytics and predictive controls. The technologies and prototypes have been built and are being tested, and we are very much interested in scaling up. And that's why Clean Tech Open. So that is our interest, so that's why we'll be competing. Thank you. That is really awesome. Um, I was actually talking with somebody earlier who said that they want to have truth in science. And um, maybe with some, some more um, AI solutions, we'll get to that point. So uh, it sounds like you're in, uh, you're in a good place for that. Um, I hope that you'll apply to Clean Tech Open as well as to the Canada CTA, because since you're in uh, Halifax. So that's wonderful. Thank you very much. OK. and. Now, I just wanted to make sure that I haven't missed somebody. Um, okay, I see that was the K one. Okay, so next up we have um, K, which I believe is Kawa. 
Is Kawa there? The Kawa project? Hello. Okay. So, um, yes, we can hear you, Aaron. So, when you're ready, uh, take it away. All right. Hi, uh, I'm Aaron, and I'm willing to bet that over half of you have had a cup of coffee today or will have a cup of coffee today. Um, over 60% of Americans drink coffee every day. And um, as a result, we import over three and a half billion pounds of coffee. And all that goes to the landfill or compost, most likely landfill. And there it rots, releasing CO2 and methane, um, greenhouse gas emissions. It turns out that coffee is actually rich in vegetable oil, caffeine, and antioxidants after being discarded. So in essence, we're letting this all go to waste. Now, I'm not sure if you can see my video because I can't see myself, but I'm holding up here some vegetable oil that I extracted from coffee. And at the Color Project, my startup, I'm developing processes and systems to extract these antioxidants for skincare and food industries that um, these are valuable in. I'm at lab scale right now, but I'm hoping to enter pilot mode over the next year. Thanks. Well, that's pretty interesting. And um, I, I think that a lot of people should be really interested in this because they do drink coffee and they want to be healthy. So that sounds like a good way to leverage the... Uh, leverage your skills and, and uh, contribute to the circular economy. So thank you for that work. Yeah. Um, okay, so next up we have, uh, I believe, Ithaca Clean Energy. So if Ithaca Clean Energy would like to come on. Yep. Uh, All right, so go ahead, Mark, I'll whenever you're ready. Here. Uh, so thank you, everybody. And um, Ithaca Clean Energy, we're a machine learning company within offshore wind. We enable offshore wind developers to report their information anonymously so that their projects are safe and in compliance with the regulation. We have a very strong team, if I may say so. My two co-founders are based in Europe uh, and they've worked on some of the largest offshore wind projects in the world. We like to transfer that domain experience from Europe to the Northeast United States. And I do have an ask for all of you. We're currently in customer discovery mode, interviewing offshore wind developers and managers in marine logistics specifically. If you know anybody in the industry, please let me know. Thanks. Well, that is really interesting, Mark. So um, I look forward to hearing more about this. And the answer is yes, we probably can connect you to people like that. What my suggestion would be, would be to put a note in the, in the chat box and you might get a response. Um, I also can uh, perhaps connect you to some folks. So we'll talk. Great, thanks, so Thank you very much. And so uh, next up we have Milkman. So when Milkman is ready, um, Mark, you can turn off your Hi. video and we'll put on the Milkman video. Okay. Um, Hi, uh, James is here. Ready, ready to go, James? Uh, yep. Yeah. So okay. uh, I'm James Burton. I'm a co-founder of Milkman, which is an on-campus startup at Boston University. Uh, it's a startup that seeks to provide a marketable, convenient, and engaging means of promoting sustainable culture on college campuses. American society is currently relying on a system of casual disposal or single-use plastics that are thoughtlessly tossed away without any care for negative consequences. So our goal at Milkman is to create a system where drink containers can be disposed of with ease while still having minimal environmental impact. Um, and the system involves creating a reusable drink container that we would sell to on-campus businesses. Uh, customers incentivized by discounted rates would purchase our Milkman cups from cafes and restaurants. And when finished with the drinks, they would quickly and easily dispose of them in milk barrel bins found throughout campus or found throughout the area. The cups will be collected, sanitized, and then made for reuse and resold to the businesses again. Uh, we hope to establish a significant presence among campuses, uh, on-campus businesses at Boston University, and eventually expand to other closed-loop systems. So we hope Milkman will create a cycle that normalizes reuse and helps to undermine our culture of casual single-use and uh, disposable. Great. Thank you very much. Um, that is really cool, James. And uh, it's good to see you again after having met yeah. um, a few months back. And uh, there are some, some other um, people who are applying to Clean Tech Open with various, uh, various disposable or, or reusable cups. So I think uh, maybe we should start a little consortium of, of people working in this, uh, in this category. So um, I think there are a number of different ways to approach this problem and uh, be great to see what you're all doing. Um, so thank you. And next up, um, we have Orange Charger. So um, 
orange charger. Are you there? Okay. Whenever you're ready, Nicholas, we will turn you on. Go ahead. Um, so yeah, my name is Nicholas. Um, I'm the founder, one of the founders of Orange Charger. Um, my background is in electrical engineering and I worked at Tesla Motors previously. I actually started this company a few months back after having a talk with some friends on one of the challenges with installing charging at uh, large apartment complexes or multi-unit dwellings and uh, started drafting up a solution that would solve it. And in January, I went full time on this project after receiving 100 orders. Um, I'm looking basically for uh, early funding, so pre-seed funding and angels. And uh, what our product does is it reduces the amount of time. So we build hardware and software together uh, to reduce the amount of time to install charging at properties while also um, working with a software platform that tr does transactions between the person who pays the electrical bill and the uh, tenants so that you can install charging in apartment complexes or outdoor parking without having to run individual meters. Yeah, so that's our charger. Thanks for the time. Thank you very much. So, um, so you just made it under one, uh, one uh, tenth of a second. So good time. So thank you for your pitch. Um, really interesting. Um, this whole idea of, of making it easy for, uh, for people to do charging is really, really important. So I'm um, sure that it'll be great to see your, your application. And I believe you're in the, uh, you're in the Los Angeles area, probably. Uh, no, I'm in Orange. the Bay area. In the Bay Area, I'm, okay. I'm in Redwood City, so okay. by Stanford. Very cool. So um, great. So we'll we'll look forward to having you participate in the in the West, or at least apply in the West. So thank you. All okay. right. So next up, we have um, Renew CO2. So whenever you're ready, Renew CO2. Take it away. Hello. Hello, my name is Anders Larsen. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Renew CO2. Our company uh, has proprietary technology that converts CO2 into uh, bulk chemicals and pre uh, precursors for plastics. In particular, our first product to market will be uh, of PET plastics. So this technology allows us to make plastics fully carbon negative, meaning we will take CO2 out of emissions and put them into products. That means that we can in integrate our technology both with biofermentation technology as well as waste um, combustion technology. So uh, you can take any carbon product, any plastic and burn it and turn it back into a plastic or a fuel. So that's our technology and thank you for your time. Wow, that is really cool. So I hope that Kristen was listening. So you two should connect. So um, between radical plastics and uh, and renew CO2, we might um, be able to corner the market on, uh, on uh, the reusable and then using them for good stuff. So, um, and having them be biodegradable at the end of life. So that sounds like, sounds great. Look forward to seeing your application. And uh, I would suggest that you and, and Kristen might want to connect. Um, okay, so next up we have Sidhu Labs. Is somebody on from Sidhu? Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. And what I'm going to do is turn off my video and turn on my timer. So go ahead, to, uh, go ahead when you're ready. Okay. I'm, uh, can you see me? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Karamjit Sidhu. I'm the business development manager for Sidhu Labs. Uh, we are a company that's developing cutting edge technology in the storage industry. For power storage, we are developing solid state batteries based on solid electropolymers. We are based in Bordentown at the Rutgers Eco Center. Our technology has no uh, oil filling, no liquid filling, and the batteries does, do not require any heating or cooling from zero degrees C to 60 degrees C. Uh, this is the technology which will be commercialized in the next few years. We are in the late stage R&D, and in about six months to 12 months, we'll start going into pilot production. So we are looking at ramping up production of this product. We have a whole bunch of international customers uh, in the EV, energy storage, consumer products, and microgrid type applications who are going to be working with us. So we are very excited about our technologies. You can see more about it on our website. That's www.sidolabs.com. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Kamit. This is really, really cool. Uh, I think that 
what you said when you said you have customers, you mean that you have people lined up to be your customers when you're ready. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We are talking to uh, global players, particularly in EVs and microgrid, as well as in telecommunications now. Fabulous. Well, this is a huge issue and uh, really thrilled to, to know that, that you're working in storage. Um, it is one of the, one of the top subjects um, in, our, in our world, for sure. So I'm um, really excited to see what your, uh, what your solution's about. And I believe we have Transit X is next, and I believe that that may be the last one in our alphabetical order. So when you are ready, Mike, um, take it away. Yeah, Transit X is a uh, new form of uh, public transit where a micro guideway is carrying these automated pods uh, that travel above roads and highways. So we don't have any large stations. A pod stop can be on every block. So the pods come down to the ground on micro lifts that fit on a sidewalk. Uh, so these four passenger pods, they have two separate compartments and carry up to a ton of freight. Uh, we had our first prototype and test track in 2018 and we started projects in New Hampshire and an 80 kilometer project in China. Uh, we will, should be able to break ground this year and begin operations next year. Uh, we partner with large reputable firms for bonding, insuring and certifying all the projects. Um, so this is really the, we have the cost, capacity and convenience to supplant all the other forms of transportation, cars, buses, trains, trucks, making cities to be green and walkable. We don't need government financing or guarantees. They're profitable because the infrastructure costs less than uh, roads. They're financed using green bonds and impact funds and commercial banks. So I'm Mike Stanley, I'm the founder of TransitX. All righty, well, this is really interesting and quite a bit different from, uh, from many other approaches to our, our transportation needs. So um, thank you for your creativity and uh, excited to see and I see more about what Transit X is about and see your application. Uh, transportation is, is another critical issue that, um, that we are all dealing with. And uh, just because we're a little bit on pause right now does not mean it's not important. <laughs> so um, anyway, I wanted to thank everybody. I know sometimes it can be nerve wracking to, to uh, get in front of people and tell your story, but you all did great. And we're really looking forward to getting to know you a little bit more. And um, I hope that you will all apply and um, I will turn it back over to, um, to Tricia for the last, oh, are we going to do a, um, an audience choice award? So sorry. Okay, quickly, everybody who's still on, go to slido, S-L-I dot D-O, and we will, have a, um, we will have a mini competition here. So go to S-L-I dot D-O, enter the code CTO5. And you can pick your favorite from the ones that just pitched and we will make a quick announcement of who wins. So you can do this on a, um, on a laptop or on a phone. It doesn't really matter. And uh, once you go to sli.do, just hit capital C, capital T, capital O, and then the number five. And what you should see there is the list of the companies that just pitched. So we'll give you another moment and then we will um, we will take it from there. Okay. Um, if you still need time, um, maybe we can do 10 seconds, but we really want to get this done and, uh, and send everybody on their way. And uh, Dom, are you able to see the answers or Trisha, are you able to see the answers? I'm able to see the answers, yes. Um, I'm, okay. Yeah. Okay, do you want to make the announcement of who won the people's choice? Yeah, sure. Um, as I'll give you just one more minute. We're getting a lot more votes coming in right now. Okay. All seconds here. Okay, it looks like it's a two-way tie between the Cabo Project and Renew CO2 LLC. 
Wow. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, um, so we will be in touch with uh, with both of you. And uh, do we have a do we have a prize, Tricia, or um, will we? offer them. Yeah, so the um, the pitch winners, you'll be receiving a discount for your applications, 50% off your application fee. Um, so you'll be receiving a follow-up email with that information and the congratulations. We'll also recognize you in our follow-up email so folks know um, that we heard from a series of amazing pitches um, and then who the audience choice winners were. Right. And so to apply to Clean Tech Open, um, I believe that that's the next, uh, do we have one more slide to apply to Clean Tech Open? We have a, a quick URL, it's bit.ly slash CTO 2020, or you can just go to cleantechopen.org. And um, we look forward to seeing all the great applications. And back over to you, Tricia. Yes, thank you. So um, as Beth said, uh, this information um, is how you apply for the Clean Tech Open Accelerator Program. Um, if you are not located in the Northeast, this is still the link that you would use. We encourage you um, from all uh, over the country in Canada um, to apply for the Clean Tech Open. All of the regions um, have robust programming and they all have their unique um, regional <laughs> spin on, on how they approach it. But overall, um, participating in the Clean Tech Open, hopefully you have a sense of how the program operates by listening to this webinar, even if you aren't um, looking to participate in the Northeast. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us if you're not part of the Northeast so we can connect you with the regional directors from the region you're um, interested in reaching out to. You'll also all, as a reminder, receive all of the slides and a recording of this webinar. So you're able to reference, use the hyperlinks that you saw in the presentation today um, and follow up on some of those resources. So thank you all once again for coming, um, coming out <laughs> to our webinar, tuning in. Um, it's great to see your faces. It's great to hear the inspiring pitches from all of the startups. Um, keep up the amazing work. We um, do what we do because of you. And um, that alone is, is enough to keep us optimistic about our future. Um, so thank you all and have a wonderful afternoon. Stay safe and be well. <laughs> thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, Oscar. <laughs>